Hey guys, Lordicus here with a 100% walkthrough for Scorn. This is going to cover all 12 achievements. I've ran the axe multiple times to give you the most efficient and quickest way of doing this. There's one missable achievement in Act 1, which will involve us to reload the act, and we'll have to complete it twice. Other than that, it's your typical story game where you get the achievements during and at the end of each act. I've also not cut or edited this video at all, so you can run this side by side while you're playing the game. As long as you follow my lead and the routes I'm taking, you should finish this game in just over two hours. Just a quick note, if you do die during this playthrough, make sure you select continue and not load. Selecting load will put you back at the very start of the act and you'll lose some precious time. Okay, now let's jump into the intro. There's going to be a quick cutscene and then we're going to start walking around in game. Once we get up, we're just going to bear left. We can't actually do anything with that locked door, so we'll just continue on along this corridor. Now we want to take a right as the door on the left is locked and we can't open that one. At the end of this corridor there's a door that's jammed that we just need to squeeze through by pressing A. Once through on the left hand side there will be a funnel or a tube which we can place our hand in. This will then bind a key to our wrist, which we can then use on the console in the middle of the room and open the door. Now we can interact with this console now that we have the key. You will need to use the directional look to open the left and then the right hand side to open the gate. The gate is timed and will slowly close so you will need to sprint with left bumper to get through the gate in time. Now we're in the main puzzle room in Act 1. You just want to bear right and go across this little bridge. On the right hand side there'll be an extraction table. We're just going to ignore that and go up this lift here by interacting with the console. At the top of the lift just run straight ahead into this large room. On the right hand side there is a console we can use to activate the crane. And then this is our first puzzle. To complete the puzzle we need to get those eggs with the lights on, which look like eyes, to the very top left where the bright light is. I found the easiest way to do this is move these singular eggs to the right hand side. Grab these singular eggs on the left hand side and move them along slightly. Move this double egg down one. Grab this singular egg, move it all the way to the right. 
and then we can grab our first egg which is lit up drag that up to the very top left now we can back out of this console holding B and then interact with this other Korean arm this is going to try and grab the egg and put it onto the conveyor belt but unfortunately the egg breaks and it can't be used so then I have to go for the second lit up egg Now that we've been kicked off this console we can go back onto the other one and now we need to try and get out the last lit up egg and the only way to do this is getting all the dead eggs to the right hand side of that lit up egg. If you just follow the video guidance here this will be the most efficient route to get this out with the least amount of tries. So I'm going to shut up for now and let you watch the video. Now that we've secured another survivor out of the egg, he's going to move downstairs. So what we need to now do is turn around and exit back down the lift into the large chamber that we first entered. Now back in the main chamber, the follow survivor or scorn is on the other side of the room. You'd be able to see him just above this second cream arm on the roof there. What we need to do is activate this console to get him down. The crane arm's already in the correct position, so we just need to press A. This will remove him from the roof. And then we just need to press down on the directional and then A to plonk him in the chair. Once in the chair, we're going to push him along the track until we get to the first extraction device. Once we get here, he will click into place and all you need to do is hold B to exit the animation. Go over to this console beside him and activate the first extraction procedure. Depending which room we move this little chap into next, you'll either get the 001 or the 002 achievement. The 001 method involves escorting him around after you've extracted him which takes a lot longer than what the method is on 002 where it just leaves his hand on the floor. So what we're going to do is go for the 001 achievement. We're just going to leave him here. We're not going to push him any further because we now need to change the rails on this track so they point to a different direction. The controls for these rails are in the middle tower here. 
need to follow the spiral staircase to the very top and interact with the console. Once you interact with the console, the view will turn to a top-down perspective. And what we want to do is highlight the bottom two tracks. So this one closest to him and then the next one along. Change both of these. So the track leads to the very north and he goes out of that bright door at the very top of the map. Now we can go back downstairs and push him along the rails. And then once he reaches the end, we'll enter another extraction room to get the 001 achievement. Now that we've got to the end of the line, we just need to back out of this and use this console here. I'm going to use this console to lift him out of his chair and move him to the table at the right hand side. So just press A to lift him up and then use the directional stick to move him to the right hand side. Then just press A again to drop him into the chair. We're now going to back out of this console and use the one on the right hand side to complete the extraction procedure. Once the procedure is complete, we just go up to the chair and press A to pull him out. This will give us the 001 achievement. At this point you would then escort him around the room and get a key imprinted on his hand to open the door. But instead of doing all that we're just going to quickly load our previous save or load the very start of Act 1 again. And then we're going to proceed to get the 002 achievement. So there we go, 001 has popped. And then when we can just press start to go into the main menu, load game and then load act one one again this is going to throw us back to the very start of the the act where we have to go to the right and up the lift again you will need to do this egg puzzle again unfortunately to get him back downstairs but i'll catch up with you guys once you've completed the puzzle and got him downstairs again
now that the puzzle's complete and the fellow scorn is back downstairs we can now go for the 002 achievement by doing the other extraction by getting him into a slightly different room so first of all we're just going to go up this spiral staircase in the middle and adjust the tracks once we activate the console and we get the top down view again all we're doing this time is changing the first bottom left track which is highlighted there just change it once and leave the others as they are we can now back out and go back downstairs and proceed with the extraction procedure and this will push him into a slightly different room which has slightly different surgical tools which will give you the 002 achievement Now that we've pushed him to the end of the line, we can then come out of here and go on to the console to the right hand side here. Same as premise as before, we need to lift him out of the chair or into the other chair. Once in place, we can then back out and use the other console in front of us. Once we activate this console, it'll complete the extraction procedure. Unfortunately, he's not going to be left in any fit state to be escorted anywhere. But thankfully, there is an arm left on the chair, which we can use to open the gate. Once he's been disposed of, come off the console and pick up his arm to get the 002 achievement. And then I'll show you where we need to go with said arm. Now with the arm in hand, just head back out to this main chamber. Look to the right hand side and you'll see a gate here with two consoles. One of the consoles requires an arm placed in it, which we have here. But firstly, it needs a key attached to it. So just head over to this tube or funnel, pop the arm in and this will imprint a key onto it. Now we can head back to that gate. Pop the arm in the console to the left hand side and then we can use the right hand side console ourselves to open the gate and this should be the end of act one. Once we've got the gate open there'll be a lift directly in front of you just interact with that to get upstairs and we'll start act one part two.
Now that we're heading into Act 1, Part 2, this is a fairly linear section which only takes about 5 or 6 minutes to complete. First of all, we need to collect our first weapon. This is found over here in this middle console. You just need to go over there and interact with it. The weapon is some sort of melee ranged punching device, which is used to open certain consoles and kill enemies at close range. Once we've got the weapon in hand, we'll just turn around and go down one of the side corridors. The room on this act is kind of a horseshoe shape. Both sides of the horseshoe have a console that we need to interact with, this being the first one. What this is going to do is release a cryo egg which will go along a conveyor belt to the end destination. These consoles also release fairly passive enemies which are easily killed with the melee weapon, but we'll get onto that shortly. Once this egg has been released and moved along, we then move on to the opposite side of the horseshoe and start the next console. With this console activated and both eggs released, we can now proceed along to the end destination where the eggs have gone to. Just be aware that these passive enemies are going to be in the way and we will need to melee them with the weapon. Just follow along with the guide and you should be fine. Once we get to this chamber we need to activate this console which will give us control of some sort of floating device which allows us to pick up these eggs. All we need to do is fly the device around, interact with the three eggs on the outside and place them in the middle column. Every time we attach an egg to the central column another console will open up below, we just need to use that go back to the central column, move another egg up, rinse and repeat three times, and then the achievement for 003 shall pop, and we'll move into Act 2.
the very start of this act you find yourself outside and what we're doing here is just following fairly linear paths to the complex or facility that we're about to enter once inside we're just going to navigate various tight corridors and tunnels which doesn't need commentary non-stop so i'll go quiet now and just shout up when we get to key locations within inside the facility first key point to mention is we need to get the key of this dead body here you'll notice that the key is made up of four what look like bony rings what we need to do is cover all four of those in flesh to unlock the central pods and exit this level so the mechanics on the key is that you, what you need to do is slot into these open sections here and then at the top engage all three to release the key you have to do this up to four times in various places within the facility to fully upgrade the key now that we've got our first key upgrade we can go to what i'd like to call the hibernation chamber in here you'll find a key slot that you can pop the key in this is going to open the first gate on the left, but not enough to release all four of the pods. For that, we need another three upgrades. So once this scene is finished, we're going to then go up the lift on our left-hand side and make a way through another three rooms to get the three key upgrades. At 
the top of this tunnel we'll come across a console this activates various bridges for this we want to select the middle or the second bridge to connect and this will take us through into our next room to find a key and we'll also get the implant on our wrist to open other doors we just want to make our way up to the top level we'll find what looks to be some sort of power unit which has three connections all we want to do is pull all three connections out of the unit that'll stop the fan blades which we can then traverse through back downstairs once you finish this sequence and turn around you will be attacked or integrated with the, the little creature that's crawling around on the walls and you'll get the achievement 004 which is called Close Encounter. Now that we have the achievement and the fan blades are turned off, we're just going to make our way downstairs and navigate through those fan blades. Through here, you will find another key upgrade. This one's slightly different in the fact that the notches that you need to slot the key into are turning. So what we're listening out here for is an audio cue. Whenever it clicks, that is a location that you can lock in. So just wait for it to make the click sound and then press A to use and that will lock it in. Do that three times and then sw switch it around to the 12 o'clock position and remove the key. That'll be our second upgrade. If we bear left and go down this lift, at the bottom of the lift you will find a tube or a funnel which you can put your arm into. This will give you the key upgrade on your wrist similar to what we had in Act 1. This will be needed for the next room that we go into. Once that's on your wrist, just go through the door to your left and then back to where those bridges were. Now that we're back at the bridges, we just want to use the console and open the first or the very left door. This will take us into another room where we will get our third key upgrade.
this mechanic works in the same way as the second upgrade just listen out for those clicks on the notches move your red keel to that area and then lock in when available do this three times and then disengage the key at the 12 o'clock position Now that we have our third key upgrade, we want, just want to go across to this console here, move the body out the way, and then use the key that we got on the first room to use this console. What this console does is release a corrosive gas or acid that will clear dead bodies. So we just want to select the third path here, which is full of um, human remains or scorn remains. Press A to initiate the sequence and this will remove the blockage in the path. And as you've probably guessed, this is the next route we want to take to get our fourth and final key upgrade. Now that we're back at the bridge selection console, we just want to select what is now the middle bridge, the one that is now covered in the corrosive gunk, which we use to clear the dead bodies. We just want to head across this bridge and initiate the key sequence to upgrade the key for a fourth time. This one's a little different because half of the console is covered, so you can't see the left-hand side. But what you want to do is first select the three o'clock position wait for it to click in and then move around to about five o'clock and click that one in and then we need to move around to about the eight o'clock position and then click that one in for the third once all three have clicked in just move it back around to the 12 o'clock to disengage the key and then we have a fully upgraded key now we can make our way back downstairs into the hibernation chamber and use the key Now that we're back in the hibernation chamber, just head over to this lock that we first used at the very start, put the fully upgraded key in and turn it. You'll notice that all four pods now drop and we have this sequence completed. The lock will then roll over to the left hand side and integrate with another console. We're now going to go and use said console. This console has a slightly different mechanic that we've not yet seen in the game. What we want to do is line up these four white lights on the right hand side with the red ones on the left. I think the best tip I can give you is try and line up the ones with the most furthest left first. So start with the very middle left one and then the top one and then the bottom one and then the middle one. Once you've got those all four lined up it'll pop back in and it will open the pods. Now with the pods open, we can collect another key and what Scorn use is a medikit from this middle console. The first thing you pull out is the key and then the next little alien looking face thing is your medikit. Once you've collected both of these items, the achievement 005 will pop, which is called key possession. Now that's about it for Act 2-2. We just need to open a couple of locked doors and head up a lift.
Act 3 is quite combat intensive. You'll run into a lot of encounters with enemies, so you need to maintain your health as best you can. There's a lot of scenarios where you can just hit and run. You don't have to kill the enemies outright. You can just stun them and then move on. As I've done in previous acts, I'm just going to comment where needed, but I found this route that I've taken here has been the most time efficient if you want to finish this game quickly. Okay, as you've seen there, we've upgraded our coded key to level two so we can go to the right here and open the locked door once through we'll encounter our first dog like enemy you need to take him out as he is defending a console i found putting him in the way of the console was the best method because he does try to spit at you so if you break line of sight until your gun has uh, recharged and then you can hit him again another two times This sequence is finished with the second console. We don't have to engage this enemy. We can simply run out the room and then close the door behind him. We do need to close this door as it opens the walkway on the upper level. So we've got a nice clean route through. As we go to leave this room and go up the staircase, we'll notice a little chicken-like enemy. They can be too shotted, but they are quite quick at attacking. So just be aware of that as you proceed. After a short jog, we now have to move this lift using this console and then board the lift. Once we've exited this, there is another console here and it'll move a lift that is blocking the way. Once it's moved, we'll just continue along the path. Down this ramp we want to take a right but on the left spawns a dog type enemy just give him a punch or two and then run away and hopefully he shouldn't hit you.
Once we get to the bottom of this ramp, the room opens up quite a bit. There's a lot of winding paths and various different routes you can take. What we're going to do is take this left and then take the downward ramp and go through this door, which is lit up with a light. Once in the center of this room, we're just going to use this console to move one of the, the lift orbs or balls further up the path. Then it'll move up the chain and then we'll head up to the next level above. As we go to leave this room, another dog-like enemy will spawn. You can give him a punch or two and then simply run away. We don't need to exhaust any time or health on him. At the top of this ramp there is a medi station where we can refill our health kit, giving some extra uses. This is essential for this level as we will be taking quite a bit of damage later on and we need to preserve our health. Through this section there is two enemies that spawn in the left hand side corridors, bypass them by taking a right. Down this corridor there's another dog like enemy that comes from the wall, you're going to have to give him a punch or two so you can get past as it's blocking the way. And then directly around this corner there is a tentacle that hangs off the ceiling which will attempt to spit at you, just simply take the right here and kill this little chicken one. Okay, now we're one floor up from the previous room. This console is just going to move the ball further up the chain and then we'll proceed from here. As with the lower floor, there is another dog-like enemy that spawns here. Just give him a couple of thumps and run past him. We don't need to kill him. On the balcony of this square-shaped room, there is a console here. It's missing two other plugs, which we need to complete the puzzle. But this first plug, once pushed in, will open a path on the top level here. So all we need to do now is go around to the lift and proceed straight through so we're on the opposite side. If we dip into this room on the left hand side we'll find our first gun or sidearm. Pick that up first. It's then going to require some ammo from a console directly behind us. Once we've picked up the ammo do ensure that you reload the gun because it doesn't automatically load the weapon. Once loaded we're going to encounter a couple of guys we can test this out on. You can either use the gun or the melee weapon depending on your choice.
Once we've disposed of those enemies, we'll come across our first little tricky puzzle within Act 3. This involves lighting up all four lights on this dash. I found the easy way to do this is pivot the middle one to the right, top right, then turn the top left one a few times until it lights up. Then we need to turn the middle bar towards the top left, and then turn the right one until it lights up. And then we're going to turn the middle back to the right and then turn the top right one four times. Once that's turned four times, we're going to set the bar back to the top left and then turn it until it turns on and then swivel the middle one all the way back around to the bottom and all four lights should appear. Now we have a second plug that needs to go back into the main room and you know where that's going to go into that console of three. That'll then in turn unlock another segment of the lift where we'll go down to the next level and through that opening. On this lower level, three enemies will spawn, two dogs and one chicken. I found if you go for the chicken first on the left hand side with the melee weapon, you can take it out fairly quickly with two hits. And then you can either dispose of the dogs or you can ignore them completely and go straight for the puzzle console. They seem to ignore you when you get over there. Okay, this is similar to the first puzzle we did upstairs. However, there is an additional light on here. So there's five to light up in total. What we want to do is point the middle circle towards the upper middle. So it disconnects both left and right circles. Once that's disconnected, you can turn the left circle in until it lights up. And then we're going to turn the top middle circle until it reaches the highest point and that should light up the top one on that. There we go. And then we need to point the bottom middle one to the right hand side and then turn that right hand circle five times in total. Now go back down to the bottom middle circle and then turn it towards the top middle. So it disconnects both left and right circles. With those disconnected, you can turn the right circle until it lights up and then just turn the bottom one to finish the puzzle. This will give us our third plug, which goes into that big room and then it opens the very lower passage on the lift. So we'll just go and do that now and unlock that passage. <laughs>
the third plug in. That unlocks the bottom floor. So all we need to do now is shuffle round to the lift. Go inside and then we want to drop to the bottom floor, two floors down, and then do a 180. So you're coming back over yourself, not going forward, turning around. Making sure that you, you come out on the same side as you go in, but two floors down. On this video I did cut it because I did wander out in the wrong direction. So apologies for that. I'll just stick a little text note on the bottom of the video telling people to turn around if they don't hear me say it several times. Now that we've come out on the bottom floor on the right side, we can use this console which is going to pick up the, the lift or the ball and move it onto another section of track. Once it's been moved onto that section of track, we're then going to follow it to the next point on the line. We then get to this section where there's two consoles. First, we want to use this one on the higher level. This controls the arm on this lift. What you want to do is move it to the left and grab the ball. That's going to lift it onto this platform. Now that we've picked it up, we can exit this console and then use the other one. This is going to raise the lift to the next floor above, bringing the ball with us. Now on the next floor up, we just need to turn around and go back on this console, spin the arm round, and then press A to pass the ball to the other crane, which is on the right hand side. Once that's got hold of the ball, we can then leave this console and go over to where the ball is currently situated on the right hand side, down here across the bridge, where you'll find another console we want to interact with this. Interacting with this console finishes this puzzle sequence and pops the achievement for 006, which is labeled as Path Forward Constructed. Once we leave this console, we then need to go into that red ball. And the best way to do that is go back left over the bridge. And then on this lift, go to the very back of the lift and stand into the center of the ball. That'll spin us round into another doorway. And then we just leave through that doorway that opens. In this next area, there is another gun or ammo station here, which will restock the ammo. This is useful because we're going to encounter a new enemy type, which is a larger version of the four legged dog. It takes a full magazine clip from your gun. So make sure you're fully loaded before you go into the encounter. As long as you don't miss any of the shots, it should kill the animal. Each bullet you hit it with should stagger it slightly and buy you some time. Around this corner is one of the little chicken characters, which you can pop two bullets into him.
In this room we've got a series of gates that need to be opened. To open the gates we need to switch back to our first gun that we unlocked, which is kind of the melee punching weapon. To change weapon just hold Y and then use the left and right directional on the analog stick to switch between the weapons you have equipped. Once we've opened this gate we'll go through to the back room and this is where we'll encounter the large animal so make sure you switch your weapon back around to the handgun or the pistol and then he's going to appear on this left hand side as you try to squeeze through the gap. Just make sure you hit him with every round. Each bullet should stagger, stagger him enough to uh, buy you enough time enough to get hit. And then once you've used a full magazine, he should die. bit further on once we've opened a series of gates you'll come to this area here which looks like a dead end but hidden around this corner is actually a lift which will take you up to the next level this console here will then reopen a part of the pathway below which we need to progress as the gate opens and the enemy will drop down this guy can be avoided and doesn't need to be killed if he's in the way just give him a quick poke with the melee weapon to scoot past him This should be the last console and section of gateway that we need to open. Once open, we'll go into a room directly to your left. There is an ammo rack, which we can use to restock our ammo. And then directly ahead of you in the middle of the room is an upgrade to your coded key, which should upgrade it to level three and open a door that we need to access upstairs. As we picked up that new key, one of the large enemies have spawned outside, so we don't want to yet open the gate. What we're going to do is utilize the gaps in the gate to melee kill the enemy. Don't worry, he can't hit you through the gate, but you can hit him. So just keep poking away at him with the melee weapon and save your ammunition in your other gun. Takes a little while for the melee weapon to charge, but we've got all the time in the world. Once he's dead, you can then open the gate and make your way upstairs to the lift. Around this next corner is what I call the level three door, which we needed the coded key upgrading for. We'll go through here and there's one final encounter before we finish the act.
as we come off this lift you'll find a tentacle hanging from the ceiling which spits acid at you what we want to do is just quickly sprint past that before it gets a chance to aim and fire around this corner is one of the little chicken characters double shot him And then we have one large alpha dog further down this corridor that we need to deal with. So just be, be on guard, ready for him. He's just around this corner, so make sure you fully loaded before going around here. Make sure you hit him with every shot should buy you enough time to kill him and that is all enemies dealt with within this act we've just got a case of activating the lift and walking forward to move into act four as the auto save kicks in for act four the achievement 007 will pop giving you both achievements for this act Thankfully, Act 4 is really short. It takes roughly 14 minutes if you follow my guide step by step. I'm going to take you through the most efficient route and bypass as many enemy encounters as possible. So let's get this ball rolling. We're going to hang right and go up this staircase. Once we interact with the console at the top, this is going to pierce a hole in this big chap and then we can get inside the little compound. Once this cutscene's played out, we're going to turn around and go back down the stairs. One of the small chicken-like enemies is going to be waiting for us at the bottom. We just take him out with two or three shots if you miss. Once inside here there is a button we can interact with. This is going to send a, one of the puzzle parts upstairs that we need for the very end puzzle. Once done, do a 180 and go down this separate path, not the same one we came in on. Along here, three to four enemies are going to spawn in. All we're going to do is concentrate running down the middle, avoiding them completely. Once we've entered the main hub area, we're going to take the top left path. Along here, it splits off to the left. We're going to completely ignore that and carry on straight ahead. There is a medikit station here if you just want to top up on some extra health. And then directly behind you, as we've stood now, is a console we need to use to make another pathway and unlock a second puzzle piece. So just interact with this, let the cutscene play out, and then we'll backtrack. Just head back out the same corridor we came up. Avoid this guy, we don't need to kill him. He did get a lucky hit on me as I passed. And then what we're going to do is drop down the very central column here. We're going to where the puzzle is eventually put together. Another brief cutscene about this parasite that's got hold of us.
head down the stairwell and then do a 180 so you go underneath the staircase you came in on at the very end of this corridor is a new weapon unlock it appears to be some sort of shotgun make sure you pick it up out of this rack and then just to the left here there will be an ammo station where we can top up with some ammo as well like with the pistol you will need to reload it for first use it doesn't automatically reload when you pick up the ammo and sure you do that and then we'll move on As we leave this room we're going to bear left and go down this corridor. About halfway down there is a large alpha four legged animal. However the shotgun makes short work with two blasts. Ensure you reload that before continuing on. And then we're going to go up this lift. Once up the lift you'll encounter two of the small little chicken enemies. You can kill them with one blast of the shotgun and then continue on across this bridge. Once across the bridge we're going to then bear left and go through this lit up doorway. Ignore the room to the left, we're going to go straight up the stairs, come back around on ourselves and down here there's a console which will give us the level 4 key. Now with the key in hand we're just going to backtrack down the same staircase that we came in and, and then swing right and go down the same lift that we came up. Just retracing our steps so we don't have to fight any additional enemies. As we come up to the room where we collected the shotgun, we're going to go straight on. This has a key lock which we can now open with the additional level 4 upgrade that we got. Just head down this corridor and then up the lift at the end. As we come up the lift, one of the medium size dog enemies will appear you can then simply take a, a shotgun shot to him to kill him i want to open this gate here so we need to switch back to our melee weapon which can be used as a key that'll open the gate and then we'll continue on Head through the gate and then go straight over this junction and then you should find another door that requires a level 4 key to open. Once through the gate we want to go immediately right and down this path. This is one of the gates that we opened earlier on and this will send the second puzzle piece up to the puzzle room. We're now just going to retrace our steps and head back out. When we get to the junction room again we're just going to head straight back over and go through the gate that we opened a little earlier. When we'll come across the lift that we came up we're just going to go straight past that and down this corridor. One of the large alpha enemies will spawn on the right hand side here. He can be ignored as long as he doesn't hit us. And then we're going to take the lift up to the next floor. As we come up the lift we want to look to the right. 
we'll find a third console here that's going to make our third and final pathway through to our last puzzle piece that we're missing and then we're going to backtrack down the same lift Just a reminder that the big alpha is still down here so best to avoid him where possible and then on the right hand side we've opened a new pathway which we can go down and activate our third puzzle piece we now have all three pieces of the jigsaw so now we just backtrack out of this room and head over to the main puzzle room on the top of this ramp take a right squeeze past these two enemies if you're not willing to kill them through the gate that we opened previously and then we want to swing to the right here and enter the main room where the three puzzle pieces will now be found once downstairs just activate the console and it's a fairly straightforward puzzle you just want to get the white dot into the very center of the maze I found that going down into the bottom right first and then switching the screens on this next screen I went a little too far I wanted to be a bit further back so I, I noticed my mistake after a couple of turns and then move the dot slightly and I can rotate the screens again and proceed onwards and we want to go down this very bottom channel here a couple of swings and then we can reach the center of the maze this is then going to raise this whole platform up into the air killing whatever beast is on the top and showering you with all its glorious blood. We're now coming to the very end of this act. All we need to do is follow the pathway up and out and then we come across a train or a monorail which we need to board and activate. And then once we've rode the monorail or the train for a few minutes once you get off at the end, the achievement will unlock for 008. You need to proceed a little bit further than that to the staircase. At the bottom of the staircase, the auto sable kick in and you're ready to move on to Act 5.
Act 5 is going to take you roughly half an hour to complete if you follow my walkthrough step by step. It's a little longer than the other acts because you do have a long boss fight that takes anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Other than the fiddly boss fight, the rest of this act is fairly easy to complete. So once we've gone upstairs and into the temple, we're going to bear left here and go through this archway. We're going to go down one flight of stairs and exit into what looks like a chamber with two pregnant bodies. First of all, we're going to need the vial from this first body on the left. So interact with this. And then once we've got that in our inventory, we're going to go down the steps and straight ahead. At the end of this corridor, you'll find a terminal where we can insert the vial. That'll open the door beside us and voila, we enter what is the boss room. There's a few steps before we trigger the boss. First of all, let's get some ammunition from this station here. For most of the boss fight, we'll be using the melee weapon, but there is on the second phase an opportunity to use the shotgun, so we'll be using that. Once we've got the ammo, let's head over to the medic bay and top up our heels. It always comes in handy during a boss fight. Now that we've stocked up on ammo and health, we'll just turn around and pick up this egg on the table. On the on side of this room, there is a mechanical skeleton or body, which we can insert the egg into. Fortunately, this skeleton doesn't have any legs or arms, so it's not going to hurt us. All we want to do is then switch to our melee weapon and kill the egg and the fetus inside. After a couple of seconds, you will then be able to loot or pick up the fetus. Once we've picked up the fetus, we now have to go back to the terminal just outside this room. So turn around and take a right through this corridor. Insert the fetus into the terminal and this is going to be slightly disgusting, but crush the fetus into the vial, which will fill it up completely. Now that we have the vial, the gate next to us will open and we can turn to the chamber. What we have to do here is then insert the vial into that same collection point that we picked it out of earlier. This is going to feed the body and create a little plant or root on the forehead of the body. That's one of the two bodies complete. We now have to do the same to the other body on the left hand side. Unfortunately, the vial is now empty and the only way to fill said vial is kill another two fetuses. And these guys will fight back as they do have upgrades. OK, now we need to head back into the boss room, putting the empty vial into the terminal at the end of this corridor. To start the boss fight, we need to then collect this second egg and place it in the robotic body on the other side of the room. I would advise healing up fully before you start this because this is quite a lengthy boss fight. In terms of the mechanics for the boss fight, he has both melee and a ranged attack. If you go too near him, he will punch you and it'll deal quite a lot of damage. So we try to stay at range. The ranged weapon he's using is some sort of grenade launcher. He usually fires between two to three shells and those will explode on the ground wherever they land. What we're going to do here is just run around the room until he runs out of ammo. When he reloads he does become vulnerable and like a, a sack hangs from either side of his body. 
when the, once these sacks are exposed we're going to use the melee weapon that we have in hand already to pierce these sacks and once both sacks have been destroyed we'll move into phase two so i'm just going to run around the room here try my best to avoid the, the explosive damage he can hurt you with direct impacts as well and then while he's reloading there you'll see a purple sack hanging from the side of him all you need to do is poke it once with the melee weapon you need to do this twice on both sacks so four hits in total he's now reloaded with some more grenades so we're just going to run around the room until he's exhausted all ammunition and then he's going to go down on his knees again and reload and expose those sacks just rinse and repeat until both sacks are destroyed This is the fourth and final blow on the sack which will destroy both sacks. He'll fall over which gives you time to change to your shotgun because on phase two we want to pierce the womb or the fetus on the front of his chest and it's best doing this with a ranged weapon, ideally the shotgun. He's going to be on his hands and knees here and then he's going to lay out his grenade launcher. This gives you an opportunity to interact with it unfortunately you can't pull it off and he stands back up and we go into phase two the only way i found he'll expose his chest is when he goes for a melee punch so what we want to do is run around the room until he's run out of grenade launcher ammunition in phase two here he doesn't reload until he attempts to punch you so I found the best method of doing this is sprinting close by him until he goes into his punch stance. You have like a 50-50 chance that he will expose his chest. So if he exposes his chest as he's about to swing a punch at you, you can shoot it and it'll stagger him. If he doesn't open his chest and goes for a punch, you need to move away quickly so you don't get hit. Once he's finished the punch sequence or you've shot him in the chest, he'll then go to reload and we run around the room again until he's run out of ammunition. Rinse and repeat this two more times and then it should kill him and you'll receive the fetus.
this is our final blow coming up here to the, the chest or the womb. He's going to stagger around the room a little bit and then once he settles he'll fall over and the fetus will fall out. When we interact with the body we'll get both the grenade launcher on his arm as well as the fetus. We now need to carry the fetus back outside to the terminal. Unfortunately, this won't fill the vial completely. We'll need a third fetus, which is a second boss fight. This next boss encounter is slightly different in the fact that once the guy runs out of ammunition, his back will open, and then we can use the grenade launcher to land a grenade in his backpack and kill him outright. It's a little quicker than the first boss, which we've just done here. To gain access to the third egg, we need to open the gate. The only way to do this is stand on the platform here to the left and then launch a grenade launch around through this window, which will turn break the mechanism and open the gate. And then all we're going to do is what we've done twice already, pick the egg up and place it in the robotic structure or skeleton at the end of the room. This is going to start our second boss fight. The mechanics are very similar. Just run around the room until the boss runs out of ammunition. And when he goes to reload, his backpack will open on his back. And then we need to launch a grenade launch around in said backpack and it'll blow the boss up. The boss is now out of ammunition here and his backpack will open, glowing bright red. Just launch a grenade launch around in there and boom, there you go, done and dusted. A lot easier than the first boss encounter. All we need to do now is pick up the fetus, put it into the vial and exit this area. Now that we've got a full vial we can then leave this zone and then attempt to return it back to this second body but unfortunately the parasite has taken hold and our left hand is unusable now we can't grasp any inventory items or use any devices so there's another gameplay mechanic come into play here where you have to clean or purge the parasite from your left hand to use anything so for example here, we'll attempt to use this and nope, can't. My hand is covered. So we can't do anything else in this room. So we need to go back outside and move to an adjacent room where we can get our hand cleared and move forward with the story. So we'll go down this stairwell into a new room. 
Here we can still use our grenade launcher we can, so we can stand on this pad and open the window. Fire a grenade launcher around in there and it'll open the gate beside us. With the gate open we can now wander through and bear right. There will be a locked gate that requires the key code. We do have a level 4 key code but unfortunately we can't use our left hand unless we put our hand in this device which is going to rip off those roots and vines and allow us to use our hand briefly. You can only use your hand for roughly 10 seconds before the vines or the roots grow back on your hand and you can't use it again. If this happens you'll have to return to one of those terminals and pull them off again. Once through the coded gate we then come into this room where we have to stand on a platform. We can still use our grenade launcher so the key here is to launch it into the window at the end and open the gate. Unfortunately there's obstructions in the way so you have to wait for a window of opportunity to launch it. Once you have a gap launch it through there and it will open the gate in front of you. This will allow you to upgrade your key to the maximum level 5. Unfortunately our hands covered up again so we have to go back to that last device that we used previously. Remove the roots and the vines and then we can go and get the level 5 key. Now with the level 5 key we can go back into the main room behind us and open the level 5 door. Again we'll need to use one of the extraction devices to pull off the roots and vines on our hand. I'll show you the closest one here to the left. In this room we're going to find an extraction device which is going to remove the parasite from our body. Again we'll need to remove the thorns and vines from our hands before we can interact with the extraction device. So we're going to backtrack to the same terminal we just used before opening the door and then return to this extraction device. As we climb into the device, the camera angle will change from an uh, out-of-body perspective. All we want to do is target the claw on the back of our neck to remove the parasite from our body. Once extracted, that will unlock the 009 achievement, which is called Extraction. <laughs> 
Now we need to make our way back to that chamber which has the second body that requires the fluid. Unfortunately the gate behind us is now locked so we have to go the long way around outside of the structure and back in. All we need to do is tootle along to this console, plug in and open the gates. Once we've got the gates open we have a bit of a walk to get back inside the building. So just follow my route and that will be the most efficient and quickest way to get you back inside. Now that we're back inside the temple, we're going to hobble down one level to where those two bodies are and the, the body on the left that was missing the vial. We're going to input the vial, which will then lift us up to the top floor. Now that we've inputted the vial of liquid, the achievement 010 will pop, which is called fluid flowing within. Once we get to the very top of this lift, we want to do a 180 and turn around and enter the device behind us. At the end of this procedure, achievement 11 will pop called Perception Beyond.
Once we get up off the table, you'll notice in the bottom left you now have the ability to switch. This allows you to switch between two forms or bodies. The pregnant form that we're currently in now needs to go back to the surgeon behind us and interact with him. That'll pick up your corpse that is currently in the surgeon's arms and you can then carry him up the stairs. The other form, we need to then go over to this console on the right hand side and extract a key into his wrist. With that key, he'll then be able to open this door and then switch back to the pregnant form and carry the body or our corpse through the very end door at the end. We now have a fairly slow walk with our body to the top of the stairs. At the top of the stairs, in front of the door, you'll find a pressure plate that we need to stand on. Once you stand on that, there'll be a long walk sequence followed by a cutscene, end credits, and then you'll get achievement 12, which is called Finn. I hope you found this video guide useful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.